Hello, it's Beyond Babbitt. Let's just jump right into it. This is breaking news. This is the Easter World War III special update. All within the last 24 to 48 hours. Now let's go over the news, the top headlines, the World War III update part of this Easter holiday, if that's what you believe it is, this Easter holiday weekend. Okay, let's go. And this is all within the last 24 to 48 hours, okay? So the Metro is reporting that North Korea pre preparing for new nuclear test, Japan warns. And we thought they were having a meeting sometime in May. This would be the perfect time for a sneak attack. And so Japan's watching them. Uh, apparently there's activity going on at their nuclear test site. So we don't know if they're going to shoot a missile or, or make an explosion, which could trigger this war. Okay, number two. The Washington Post is reporting Russia to expel over 50 British workers, deepening tensions between Kremlin and London. As you know about the spy situation, uh, the, the spy that got poisoned, Russia got the blame. Um, their diplomats were expelled from the U.S. and t something like 20 to 22 other countries around the world, and they're retaliating. Okay, next. 9news.com is reporting Australian diplomats ordered to leave Russia within a week. See, that's, that's tit for tat. It's starting to ratchet up. You know, you, you touch me and I touch you. It's... it's it's going at a feverish pace. Uh, I suggest everyone be ready. It can go down at any time because something has to be the trigger that launches the whole thing, and um, we'll see. Okay, next. Um, the Times of India is reporting that India increases deployment of troops along the border with China near Tibetan region. Okay, and so we know what happened uh, India and China had the, the uh, about a four-month standoff last year, uh, and it's basically along the New Silk Road route, the O B O R, the One Belt One Road. And so after the standoff, they thought they had an understanding. The uh, Indian troops went back, and um, the China troops left, but they came back and started back building. And so India, I think they're going to preempt them this time. Um, that's just, Things are ratcheting up all over the world. We need to be ready for it, whatever. Okay. USA Today is reporting, Trump's actions send clear message. China's era of intellectual property theft is over. This is going to um, ratchet up the trade war, which sometimes lead to real wars, hot wars. Um, you know, Trump has uh, sanctions and tariffs and, uh, all kind of things working to to try to even the balance here and um, make America MAGA, make America great again. But China has already been touted to be the number one. So, I mean, if it can be solved diplomatically with diplomacy, maybe. Or maybe bombs away, baby. It's not a good situation. Okay, next. Um, the Express... And the UK is reporting World War III. It says, Turkey prepares to invade Iraq to clear Kurdish terrorists. Wow. And Turkey is supposed to be a NATO country. Turkey is supposed to be on our side. Right? Also, France is a NATO country. France is supposed to be on our side. We're supposed to if an Article 5 is invoked by Theresa May or someone else, uh, all everyone is supposed to come together and fight against that enemy. But there seems to be a lot of infighting going on. See, these, these things happen. These things happened in World War One and World War Two. People trade sides and backstab. and So that's how I know that maybe World War Three, the sides are starting to shape now. They're choosing sides. Okay, next. Um, Al Jazeera.com is reporting Turkey's Erdogan rejects French offer to talks with SDF. Okay, so Turkey and the French are on opposite sides of this thing. Uh, Syria and Iraq, they're on opposite sides. 
and they're both supposed to be like NATO countries. Okay. Um, ABCnews.go.com is reporting um, at volatile Syrian front line, U.S. Turkey on opposing sides. So we're also on opposing sides with Turkey, the U.S. And they're supposed to be a NATO nation. How, how's that going to work? How's that going to play out? You know, the Turks once were the Ottoman Turks. They had a big empire for a number of years. Um, maybe they're trying to go their own way again. Maybe they want to be number one. You know, there used to be a, a TV show, a series called The Highlanders. It can only be one. Okay. And um, I'm going to put an article down below uh, about Venezuela, the collapse in Venezuela. And there's a guy who basically <sighs> saying how to operate with a debased currency. The currency, the, the boulevards, it sank below a peso. They're using Cuban pesos, U.S. dollars, using a lot of other currencies. Uh, he talks about the pros and cons of silver and gold, cryptocurrency, so forth and so on, and using their own currency. So he's telling us how it's going there and how some people are surviving and not surviving. And it gives you some thought on how you can prepare if these, because these things happen so quickly, uh, you could prepare to what you're going to do if it happens to come here. Okay, the next thing, let's go ahead and get into our Easter coverage. And again, happy Easter to those who are celebrating Easter, to those Christians who are celebrating Easter, unbeknownst to them. Um, and those who are, I will say unknowingly celebrating it. Uh, I can't necessarily say that there's not anything wrong with it, but I know um, where your heart is, and hopefully. And I'm going to shed some light on it to help you kind of get, because you have a half truth and you have not been announced to you. So, you know, we'll get into that. So let's do this. First, let's do it like this. I'm going to talk a little bit about Easter. Have you ever thought about this, right? You have a birthday. I have one. I'm sure everyone has one. So if the birthday, your birthday is on just, let's just say, just throw out a number, March 31st, 2018. Well, every year on March 31st, 2018, it's going to be your birthday, right? So when someone dies, um, June 16, 2099. Okay, so every year on June 16, you'd be like, yeah, this is when so-and-so died, or this is when so-and-so, you know. But you notice Easter changes every year. It's not on the same day every year. So if Easter is supposed to commemorate the death, burial, and resurrection of the Messiah, of Christ, Jesus, Yahshua, Jesus, a lot of names, why wouldn't it be on the same day, the day that's in the records? You know, he was crucified on, um, you know, just uh, February the 23rd, you know, so-and-so year. So every year, February 23rd, you'd be like, yeah, you can remember that. Why does it jump around, even different months? Why is it sometime in another month? You ever thought about that? Have you ever paid it any attention? Okay, let's jump right into it then. Uh, first things first, first things first, let's go to the book of Kings. Mm -hmm. The book of Kings, uh, first Kings chapter 11, verse five is where I'll start. Well, actually I'm going to start at verse one. I'm going to read this quite quickly. And it says, but King Solomon loved many strange women. By strange women, they said uh, that means uh, women who served other gods. Other gods. So that's strange. Okay. So, but King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, 
women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn, you, they will turn away your heart after their gods. Okay, so there's basically that's not the same God. They worship different gods, apparently. Okay, let's keep going. Solomon clave unto these in love. Okay, this is verse 3. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David, his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth. Ashtoreth, remember that name. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went uh, in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David, his father. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab and the hill that is before Jerusalem and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, angry with Solomon, because his heart turned from the Lord of Israel his heart turned from the Lord of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other God, not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Okay, we'll stop right there. That's... Um, 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. Okay. Ashtoreth. You remember early back there, it said, uh, let's see. In verse 5, it says, For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess female of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Amorites. Okay, I have a Smith's Bible Dictionary here. Let's look up Ashtoreth. It says, a star, in parentheses. And it says, you know, sometimes um, a star is also a name for angels, sometimes in, in the Bible. Okay, it says, the principal female divinity of the Phoenicians. Hmm, that's Africa. Phoenicians are in Africa, North Africa. And it says, called Ishtar by the Assyrians and Astarte by the Greeks and Romans. She was by some ancient writers identified with the moon. Okay. But on the other hand, the Assyrian Ishtar was not the moon goddess, but the planet Venus. And Astarte was by many identified with the goddess Venus or Aphrodite. As well as with the plant, as well as with the plant of that name, probably meaning planet, it is certain that the worship of Astarte, because identified with that of Venus, and that this worship was connected with the most impure rites is apparent from the close connection of this goddess with Asherah. So that was interesting. Ashtaroth, Ashtoreth, Ishtar, and a lot of other names. But it said, God got mad at Solomon for going after Ashtaroth, Ishtar. I have another book here. Let's, let's look and see what this one says. It's the pagan origins of the Christ myth. The pagan origins of the Christ myth. 
Now, I definitely don't believe that Christ was a myth, but let's look, look and see what this guy has to say about the holiday. This guy, he doesn't believe at this point when he wrote this book, he didn't believe he thought Christ was a myth. But let's get into it, shall we? It says, this is on page 26. It says, Easter is likewise of heathen origin. It is an approximation of the vernal equinox. Easter falls on the first Sunday after the first moon. I'm sorry. Easter falls on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox, the 21st of March, or as late as the 25th of April. The very name of the festival betrays its pagan source, for Easter is a variant of Eustre or Ostera, the name of the Anglo-Saxon goddess of spring. The festival of St. George takes place on April 23rd. It is a Christian replica of the ancient Perilla, or birthday of St. Rome. St. George was originally the Egyptian god Horus, who slew the Egyptian devil, set in the form of a dragon. The festival of all souls is a Christian copy of the ancient Egyptian feast of lamps, and so Arthur Weigel observes. Christians unconsciously perpetuate the worship of Osiris and the commemoration of all his subjects in the kingdom of the dead. Wow. They unconsciously do it. But who taught you to do it? Does your church celebrate with eggs and bunnies and wicker baskets? These things have a significance. These, this is how you worship that particular God. So yes, Easter, because Easter, Estera, Ishtar, is the fertility goddess. Yeah, so Easter is about the bunny, is about the eggs. It's not about the Messiah, Yahshua, Jesus, unfortunately. How do I know that? Well, we went over a few things. Let's keep going. I have another book here. The Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop. And um, chapter 3, page 97, it says, Then look at Easter. What means the term Easter itself? It is not a Christian name. It bears a Chaldean origin on its very forehead. Easter is nothing else than Astarte, one of the titles of Beltis, the Queen of Heaven, the Queen of Heaven. We'll talk about that later. Now, the Catholics say that Mary is the Queen of Heaven. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Beltis, the Queen of Heaven, whose name, as pronounced by the people Nineveh, was evidently identical with that now in common use in this country. That name, as found by Laird on the Assyrian monuments, is Ishtar. The worship of Baal, Astarte, was very early introduced into Britain along with the Druids, the priests of the groves. Some have imagined that the Druidical worship was first introduced by the Phoenicians, who centuries before the Christian era, Christian era started with Christ. They were practicing Easter before Jesus was born. How do you do that? He didn't have, even have a birthday, but you have a death day already where you celebrate. Mm, you should think about it. You should think really hard about it. Okay. Centuries before the Christian era traded uh, to the tin mines of Cornwall. But the unequivocal traces of that worship are found in regions of the British islands where the Phoenicians never penetrated, and it was everywhere left indelible marks of the stronghold which it must have had on the British mind. From Baal, the 1st of May is still called Beltane in the Almanac, and we have customs still lingering at this day among us which prove how exactly the worship of Baal or Moloch for both titles belong to the same God, had been observed even in the northern parts of this island. 
Wow. So I'm going to skip down to about half the page here on page 98. And it says, if, if Baal was thus worshipped in Britain, it will not be difficult to believe that this consort Astarte was also adored by our ancestors. And that from Astarte, whose name in Nineveh was Ishtar, the religious Solonimate, Solemnites, Solonites of April is now practiced or called the name of Easter. Easter. That month among our pagan ancestors have been called Easter Manath, the festival of which we read in church history under the name of Easter in the third or fourth centuries was quite a different festival from that now observed in the Romish church and at the time was not known by any such name as Easter. It was called Pash or Passover. Mm. And though not of apostolic in, uh, institution, was very early observed by many professing Christians in commemoration of the death and resurrection of Christ. The festival agreed originally with the time of the Jewish Passover, when Christ was crucified, a period which in the days of Tertullian at the end of the second century was believed to have been the 23rd of March. That festival was not idolatrous and it was preceded by no Lent. Now Lent has something to do with Tammuz, which is the son of God, the son of the sun God. We'll talk about that briefly. I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can. It ought to be known, said Cassius, the monk of Marcellus, writing in the 5th century and contrasting the uh, primitive church with the church in this day, that the observance of 40 days had no existence so long as the perfection of that primitive church remained inviolate. Whence then came this observance, the 40 days absistence of Lent was directly borrowed from the worshippers of the Babylonian goddess. Wow. Wow. So that let you know it's not in history in, in, in the Christian religion, but it's pagan in its origin. Pagan in its origin. Let's go over a few things right here. Who is Tammuz? Who is Tammuz? Well, see, that's why I don't use the word Trinity, because the word Trinity is not in the Bible. Nimrod was the first, quote, Antichrist. And he um, was built the Babylon. They tried to build a tower of Babel up to heaven. That's when the languages were split, when the land was split, the Pangaea, uh, in the days of Peleg. Okay, so, and it was always the sun god was... Uh, the man god deity. The moon god was the mother god deity. And then there was also a child who was the son of God. Son of the sun god. Now this, you can read this in the skies in the Maseroth if you know about that. So the fake came first. There were several fakes that came first before Jesus. And so that's why some people think, oh, Jesus copied their story. But no, there is a, definitely a distinct difference. So, okay, so... Let's look at the different...